In this video, I'm going to show you how to learn vocabulary words fast and effectively with the best method ever. I've been using this method myself for several years and it has helped me to learn all five languages that I currently speak and now I'm using it with my sixth language, which is French. If you want to know how to memorize tons of vocabulary with almost no effort, stick with me to the end of this video. Ciao pandas! I'm Jose Marti, founder of Polyglot Panda, and in this video I'm gonna show you the absolute best method to learn vocabulary with flashcards. There are millions of methods out there to learn vocabulary, and I'm quite proud to say that I have tried most of them. It's been like seven years that I started my adventure to become a polyglot. And I can assure you that this is the one that have given me the best results by far. The method that I'm gonna teach you in this video is based on spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is a learning technique based on the idea that learning is greater when studying is spread out over time, as opposed to studying the same amount of content in a single session. That's what we call spacing effect. German psychologist and philosopher Hermann Hebbinghaus was the first one to use repetition as a measure of memory, and he experimented memorizing nonsense syllables formed by a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. Things like cack, bore, gis, and stuff like that. In 1885, Dr. Hebbinghaus published what is considered the cornerstone of the study of memory, the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve describes how memory decreases over time. Also, he discovered that by spacing the memorization of the syllables, he needed fewer repetitions in order to remember them. For example, it took him 68 repetitions on one day and then 7 repetitions the next day to memorize one list of 12 syllables. But by spacing out the memorization with just one more day, he found he could achieve the same memorization in just 38 repetitions. So, with less effort and less studying, he was able to memorize the same exact amount of information. And that was just the beginning of a whole branch of psychology dedicated to understand how learning worked. Since then, thousands of studies have been made proving over and over that space repetition is the key for learning processes. But Maybe you are wondering why something as simple as spacing out or learning is so powerful. Well, the truth that maybe shock you is that one of the most important things for learning is forgetting. Yes, forgetting. Because the more we forget something, the harder it's gonna be to retrieve it. And the harder to retrieve it, the greater the increase in learning will be. Does that make sense to you? Let me go deeper with this. The American journalist Benedict Curry explained the benefits of forgetting in his book How We Learn and developed what he called the forget to learn theory. According to this theory, memory have two main departments, storage and retrieval. Storage does not fade over time, retrieval does fade. So this means that any piece of information that enters to your brain is gonna be stored there forever. The reason why you can't remember it is because the ability to access that piece of memory, that is the retrieval, is not longer there, so you have to work to maintain it. Think of this as if your brain was a library. When you put a new book on a shelf, that book will stay there forever, but if you forget where it is, then you won't find it and you will never have access to that book. But if, for example, you draw a yellow line on the floor that goes from the door to the, that specific book, then it will be easy to find it and retrieve it. In this metaphor, memorization and repetition is that yellow line on the floor. Does that make sense? Now, Mr. Carey went a little bit further in his book and explained the importance of forgetting in learning. According to the author, some breakdown must occur for us to strengthen learning when we revisit the material. Without a little forgetting, you get no benefit from further study. 
it is what allows learning to build, like an exercised muscle. So let's come back to the library metaphor. The more time you ignore the yellow line on the floor, the more it's gonna damage because it's not used and what's not used gets damaged with time. So uh, coming back from time to time to that line and drawing a new line over the old one will make it more durable. The more you do this, the thicker is gonna be the line and the more resistant will be. But careful, there are some rules in speed repetition if you want it to work. You just can't learn something and try to retrieve it like one year later. Polish researcher P.R. Wozniak was the first one to study this matter and created the first software able to determine the perfect intervals for learning. This software was called SuperMemo and this is what it found. After learning any piece of information, the first repetition must be made the day after. The second one should be made one week after. The third one after 16 days and the fourth one after 35 days. Before you start rescheduling your whole system of learning, you have to know that this was 1987 and since then many other studies have been made and those intervals have changed over the time depending on many factors like the amount of information to memorize, how far away the final test for that exact information was, etc. But it's good for you to know that those are the intervals that you should have in mind when scheduling your learning. With all this in mind, it's time to show you how to apply it to learn vocabulary in a fast, easy way. And for that, I'm gonna show you the Leitner system, a technique proposed by German science journalist Sebastian Leitner. And here's how it works. The first step is to decide the number of departments you want to use to hold the flashcards on, on them. Those departments can be tiny boxes, envelopes, or any other object that can hold flashcards. In my case, I use these tiny plastic envelopes that I bought in a local store and I name them Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, and Group 4. These envelopes are perfect for me because they make it very portable so I can play with my vocabulary at any time, in any place, even if I'm traveling from Spain to France or to New York. Once you have them, each department is going to represent a different study time interval. So for the group 1 might be studying every day, group 2 might be studied every two days, group 3 might be studied every four days for example, and group 4 might be studied once a week. When you study your flashcards, every time you get a flashcard right, it's going to graduate to the next group. But if you get a flashcard wrong, it's gonna go all the way to the group one, no matter where it was. If you didn't really get this, let me put it in a different way. Let's make a calendar, okay? So we know that we have to study the flashcards on group one every single day of the month. Then we will study the ones in group two every two days. Flashcards on the group three will be reviewed every four days and group 4 will only be checked once a week, let's say, for example, every Friday. So we just created a very visual way to know that this day we have to study only the flashcards on group 1, and this day over here we have to study all four groups. Remember, you can add as many departments as you wish and play with different time intervals to make it more challenging. By using the Leitner system, you make sure you spend more time studying the flashcards that need most of your attention and less time with those that are easy to remember. But now comes the question, what do I write on a flashcard? Well, there are millions of ways to use a flashcard and the best part of this is that their versatility allows you to use them on almost every single theme you can write a topic on one side and then write some features of the other side that you want to memorize. You can draw something on one side like a periodic table and guess what it is on the other side. You can make a question and solve it on the other side. But in this video I'm gonna focus on learning vocabulary. So I'm gonna tell you how exactly I do it. I just write the words I'm trying to learn in Spanish on one side 
and draw a little blue mark somewhere on that side. Then I write the translation to the language I'm trying to memorize on the other. The blue mark helps me to make sure that I'm always facing the Spanish side, so I won't see the other side even if a flashcard has turned over by mistake. The possibilities are unlimited. The more you play with them, the better you're going to remember them. If you already use flashcards in your study, you can help the Panda community by writing a comment with your strategy with flashcards. Well, this is how we reach the end of this video. If you liked it, please click the like button and if you want to keep getting all these tips and methods to succeed in your language learning, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, you can find a lot of incredible material and resources for free at polyglotpanda.com. There's an entire community of pandas waiting for you there. See you soon, take care, ciao pandas!